Now I've actually used the sand that I raked away from the bear lie into a, a, a big pile here, a big mound, and I've actually plugged a golf ball in the middle of that. Now there's sometimes issues when you get these plug lies on the golf course. Occasionally it's when the ball flies on the full straight into a bunker and it will bang down into a hard spot and plug into the bunker a little bit. Occasionally that might be a man-made thing where you actually get a heel print that somebody hasn't raked accurately out of the bunker and we get the ball sitting in that as well. So that's a, a fair point really is when you rake the bunker try and make sure that you don't leave anything like this that could make it awkward for the next players behind you. So this is a, a plugged lie where the ball's hitting very heavy and really dived into a, a quite a tough shot. Now I've drawn a little box around the golf ball here. Now that box starts about two and a half, maybe even three inches behind the golf ball. And that's the idea of where the club would like to enter into the sand. Now the box, which is about the size of an average sort of, um, I don't know, maybe a, a carton of ice cream sort of box or a sandwich box, a good sort of nine inches square, that's the amount of sand that I'm going to try and lift out of the bunker. Now if I play this with my lob wedge on this occasion, I think there's too much loft here, the club's too horizontal to the ground, and it isn't going to shift enough sand forwards enough for me. So I'm actually going to flick this back to my own sand wedge, a little bit more bounce on that club as well to get this golf ball out. Now, setup is going to be similar to a normal bunker shot, ball position slightly ahead of centre, placing this three inch line now in the centre of my feet. Grip pressure is going to go right the way through the roof here guys, we're going to hold on to the golf club as tightly as we possibly can, gripping down for control, but gripping a lot more tightly than normal, so that as the club comes into the sand, it isn't slowed down too much, it isn't twisted out of my fingers. I'm going to hold on to that club tightly and have a great big follow through, I'm really going to throw the club forwards as far as I can to try and drive as much sand as possible out onto the green. When this golf ball comes out, because there's so much sand on a cushion between the club face and the golf ball, the ball won't have any spin. The club doesn't get the opportunity to impart spin on the golf ball. So when this one lands, it's probably going to land and roll on quite a long way. So don't expect this one to spin up as close as the one from the bear lie did. The one from the bear lie gets a lot of spin. This one from a very plugged, deep, heavy lie won't generate a great deal of spin at all. So we're going to land this on the front fringe of the green and see if we can get it to release as close as possible to the flag. But don't expect this one to be as good as the last. So there's the setup, line in the centre, ball ahead of centre, lots and lots of grip pressure. Try and remove all of this sand out onto the green. So that was a pretty much a full swing for myself. If you look at the depth and the size of the divot right here, it's a very, very big divot. All of that box has disappeared. The golf ball landed right on the fringe in the right landing area, and then it shoots on. Now it's actually finished sort of five, six feet away from the flag, which I would take as a very, very good result from a very difficult line. Remember on that shot there, lots more grip pressure, a little bit less angle on the club face, maybe using a sand wedge instead of a lob wedge, and then really go to town on how deep you go and how much power you go, and see whether you can get some success from the bad lies in the bunkers.